Okay, so I'm going to review absolute value equations and inequalities, which is some stuff that you guys uh, learned about in Algebra 1 and you reviewed again in Algebra 2. So we're going to go through this quickly. Um, we'll start with the basic example of an equation like absolute value of x equals 2. Okay, so if you remember that this means we want a number or numbers whose distance to zero on the number line is two units, then there's really two answers. Two would be two units away, and negative two would be two units away from zero on the number line. So here we would say that x could be either two or negative two. Okay, and now using that principle, the general idea, so the general method, if you have the absolute value of something, some equation, equal to a positive number, then what you want to do is take whatever is inside of the absolute value So whatever that is, I'm going to just keep writing something. And you're going to set it equal to the positive number. And then you're also going to set it equal to the negative of that number. Okay, so you split it up into two cases. So whatever's inside the absolute value, you take that and make it equal to the positive uh, number that's over here and you take that and make it equal to the opposite or the negative of this number that's over here. So a more complicated example would be something like if I have 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 7 equals, let's say, 10. Okay, first you isolate the absolute value. Okay, so you can't just do your two cases right away. You have to get this part of the equation alone. Okay, so first you would subtract 7. So now you have 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 3. And now you can divide both sides by 3. So you get absolute value of x minus 1 equals 1. And then from here, you can do your two cases. Okay, so you take whatever is inside of the absolute value, which is x minus 1, you set it equal to 1, and you set it equal to negative 1. And then you solve. So here you add 1, you get 2. Here you add 1, you get 0. So there are two answers here. x could either equal 2 or 0. And I just want to touch on what I said over here, that we want the absolute value to equal a positive number. So right there, if you ever see something like this kind of problem where we have absolute value of something equal to negative 1, let's say. Okay, you have to recognize that this is impossible. Okay, So don't waste your time doing two cases because the two answers you're going to get won't work anyway. When you take the absolute value of something, you're eventually going to get a positive answer, right? Because it's just the distance to zero. Distance can never be negative. This is impossible. So no matter what you plug in for x, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Isolate the absolute value. Do your two cases. But if you catch that there's an absolute value equal to a negative, at that point you just stop and say you can't do that, so there's no solution for this problem. Okay, so that's how equations work. Now if you wanted to do inequalities... I can just do it on this loose leaf here. We'll start with some very basic examples so that we can interpret uh, how to write our... Uh, let me rephrase. We'll start with some basic examples so that then we can come up with a general method for more complicated looking problems. Okay, so if we start with something like absolute value of x less than 2 
and compare that with, let's say, absolute value of x greater or equal to 2. I should mention that the equal versus not equal will only change in the graph whether we include the boundary point or we don't. So whether this was equal to or not, the procedure is going to be the same. So let's just, you know what, let's make these both equal to. So we have absolute value of x less than or equal to 2, absolute value of x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, we'll start by just geometrically finding the answers. Okay, remember this means we want a number or numbers where the distance to zero is two or less, right? So if this is zero, certainly two is two units away from zero. And so is negative two. But this less than means that not only do we want to be two units away from zero, but we want to include any numbers that are also less than two units away from zero. So basically anything on the inside here we include because these numbers would be smaller than two units away from zero. Okay? This one, on the other hand, is the opposite. We still have the same boundary points, two and negative two, but now this one says to include numbers that are two units away from zero or more. So two is two units away from zero. Three and four, those are all more than two units away from zero. So we would include those. And similarly on this side, negative 3, negative 4, and all those, those will be more than two units away uh, from zero. So we include those. Okay, so this is what the pictures look like. So now let's actually write the solution algebraically. So an algebraic notation we say that x is between, that's how I always read this, x is between these two numbers. So I'm going to put x literally between negative 2 and 2, and now the symbols that you use are both less than or equal to. Okay, that's the correct way of, of writing that. This is saying that x is greater or equal to negative 2, and at the same time, x is smaller or equal to 2. Okay, so that's all the numbers in between negative 2 and 2. Okay, and that was actually important to write down. This is what we call an AND statement. Okay, now over here, the algebra notation uh, is a little different because we have two separate sets. Okay, so this first set we have all the numbers that are smaller or equal to negative 2. So that's how you would write this algebraically. And since we have another set, we say or, and then we write the notation for that. X is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so I want you to pay close attention to these words right here. Absolute value inequalities become one of two things an and or an or statement okay and here's how you can remember which when you read this symbol you read that as a less than and now this is going to be kind of a strange way of thinking about it but than the word than sounds like and than and and sound very close to each other. Okay, so that's actually how I remembered it when I was first learning it. Less than, that's going to become an and statement. So it's going to become something like this up here. This says great or, I know we say greater, but if you remember that this is a great or symbol, spelled O-R, <laughs> then that will be an or statement, okay? So a greater becomes an or, and a less than becomes an and statement, okay? So then the idea now is that we can do any problem. 
using the same philosophy. So if I had a simple problem like 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 uh, greater or equal to 8, we still do the same principle as before. Isolate the absolute value. So isolate. That means that we need to get rid of the 2. So since we're multiplying, to undo it, we divide everything by 2 and we get 4. And now once the absolute value is alone, this turns in to one of these two. Since this is saying the absolute value is greater, this becomes an or. So it turns into an or statement. So we're going to write our answer just like this. But first we have to start with what's inside the absolute value. So take the x minus 1 and we're going to do greater than 4, greater or equal to 4, or less than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so that's the setup for the two cases. You add 1, you get 5. You add 1 here, you get negative 3. So, again, isolate, take a look at what we have here. This is a great or symbol, so it's an or statement. So you write down whatever's inside the absolute value. You do greater than or equal to 4, and then you do less than or equal to the opposite, always, because that's what we did here. Greater or equal to 2, less than or equal to negative 2. Okay? So this would be the algebraic solution, and if you graph it, negative 3, shade to the left, 5, included, shade to the right. Okay? Let's do one more. No, look at this graph paper. Okay. Uh, last example, and then we'll talk about some special cases really quick. Let's say I have negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus uh, 2 greater than, let's say, negative 10. Sorry, I was off the screen there. Okay, so negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 greater than negative 10. Again, we isolate. So first we have to get rid of this negative 2. So if we divide both sides by negative 2, we get absolute value of x minus 2. And remember, dividing by a negative reverses the symbol. So now this becomes positive 5. And now we interpret what this means. We have absolute value less than becomes an and statement. Okay, so as soon as you recognize it's an AND statement, that means that we're going to be between two numbers. The two numbers that we're going to use are negative 5 and 5. These are the symbols that we used before. Less than, right? And then we put whatever's in the absolute value between those two numbers. So we use less than, we use the same symbol we have here, and we slide x minus 2 on down put that in between, and now we solve. You can solve this easily by adding 2 to all three parts of the inequality. So now we get negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 7. So our final answer is all the numbers between negative 3 and 7, but not including 3 and 7. So that's how you would solve an AND inequality. Okay. So lastly, special cases. We already talked about one of them. Uh, earlier we said that this always has to be a positive number when you take the absolute value of an equation. So if it were ever absolute value of something equal a negative, that was not possible, right? Okay. Well, there's some cases like that for inequalities as well. Okay. If you have the absolute value of anything, greater or equal to, or just greater, it doesn't make a difference. <clears throat> and let's say a negative number, and let's say you have the absolute value of anything uh, less than a negative number. Okay? You know that when you take the absolute value of something, it's going to be positive. So on this side of the equation, we have a positive answer. 
And we are saying that this positive number is greater than a negative. Well, that's always true, okay? Similarly, down here, we have a positive answer on the left because we're taking the absolute value of something. But now we're saying that that positive number is smaller than a negative. Well, this one's impossible, okay? So for the first case, we have all reals, and here we have no solution. So if you actually saw problems real quickly, like maybe you had some more stuff going on, but eventually you simplified and you got x plus 1, the absolute value of that greater than negative 3. You don't have to do anything. You just recognize, hey, this is always positive, and we're saying that this needs to be greater than negative 3. So that's always going to work. Answer is going to be all real numbers. Okay? But if it were reversed, so if I did the same problem, but you saw something like this, absolute value of x plus 1 is less than negative 3, well, that's impossible. Absolute value is always positive, and we're saying it's got to be smaller than negative 3. Well, there's no way that that works. So this is no solution. Okay? So that was a quick review of absolute value equations and inequalities. You've seen this before. I know this is kind of quick, but if you have questions, um, we'll go over some stuff in class. All right. Farewell.